Filming yourself can be challenging. Where do you place the camera? How do you frame your shot? And how do you build a sequence that tells your story? Hello, I'm Matthew Encina, and in this video, I'll share my tips for setting up and capturing footage that flows. Before I begin, I want to thank Universal Music for Creators for sponsoring this video. If you haven't seen it yet, watch part one of the series where I share my pre-production process for planning your shoots. In the second part of the series, I'll cover the camera settings I use, how to frame interesting shots, and take you through the process of building a sequence. Cinema is an aspirational gold standard for me, and I try my best to make my content look more like film than video. These are my current cameras and the general settings I use. I shoot in 24 frames per second with a 180 degree shutter angle or 1 over 50 shutter speed. And I capture in log a flat picture profile so I can fine tune the color in post. I'll leave a link to all the gear I use in the description. With our cameras ready, let's shoot. When I set out to capture a sequence, I consider the three C's. What do I want to convey to the audience? What details are critical to show for comprehension? And how can I make this captivating? This way I have a sense of what I need to capture and what can be edited out. With that in mind, we can take something ordinary like making coffee and turn it into something interesting. To capture this sequence, I tend to shoot the same action several times from different perspectives to make sure I have good coverage to play with in the edit. First, I set up my establishing wide shot. This helps to orient the viewer of the context. Then I set up a second medium shot, which tends to be my master shot. I frame it so I can clearly see what I'm doing throughout the entire sequence. If you don't have a second camera, you can shoot these separately between takes. Now that I have my entire sequence filmed, I'll capture my insert shots. These are typically short, specific shots that are close-up details of what I want the audience to pay closer attention to. To keep track of everything, I plan all of my shots ahead of time with a shot list. This one is built using my Notion template, which you can get using the link in the description. When I'm framing a shot, I think about what I want the audience to focus on, then adjust my composition and lighting to emphasize those elements. You can use contrast by making the focal point have the most prominence in value, color, or size. Leading lines can direct the eye towards the subject. Minimal backgrounds can remove distractions. Or using the action in frame can take your viewers from one focal point to another. These are just a few ways you can direct the attention of your audience. Now that we have a sequence captured, let's set the mood of the video. To do that, we'll need to find some music, and that's where Universal Music for Creators, the sponsor of this video, comes in. Universal Music for Creators is a catalog of over 50,000 claims-free music tracks. Whether you want your videos to feel lively and upbeat, or if you want them to feel chill and laid back, You can easily find the perfect soundtrack made by one of their thousands of award-winning artists. I like lo-fi and jazz, and it's rare to see so many good tracks of these genres in one place. A subscription starts at $5.99 a month and allows you to monetize your channel and stay cleared forever. Check out the link in the description and use code MATT50 to get 50% off Universal Music for Creators for the first three months. Now that we have a bin of footage and some music, let's string together the sequence. When I edit these, my goal is to go back to the three C's and edit things down to be as short as possible while retaining its cohesiveness. The nice thing about having two angles of the same action is that I can line them up and cut between them easily. Then I can use my insert shots to jump ahead in sequence. When I edit, I try to find moments to cut on action, following the direction and velocity of movements from one shot to the next. That way, everything flows seamlessly. We don't have to show every step of the action, but just enough so the viewer can follow along and stay engaged. Then only show the interesting details that move your story forward. Thinking about the payoff at the end of the sequence. While the sequence works as is, I think we can make it a little more interesting. 
specifically the intro, where we want to hook our audience. To get some inspiration, I'm going to hop over to Frameset, which is a searchable collection of inspiration for filmmakers from movies, commercials, and music videos. There are some fun overhead shots in here that I'd like to try. I'd also like to do some kind of reveal shot for the intro, which I have an idea for. I'll add these shots to my shot list, noting the details, making sure I'm shooting at the same time of day, wearing the same clothes to match my other footage. Then I'll go ahead and do a pickup shoot to capture the shots I'm missing. For the overhead shots, I'll be using a C-stand with an arm that has threading at the end of it to mount my camera too. I'll use some sandbags to balance the weight, then position my camera accordingly. Since I already have this all rigged up, it would be a waste to tear this down after a single shot. So I'm going to capture multiple shots to see if they might be fun to use in the edit. For the reveal shot, I want to start from black to get into our scene. The first reveal I'll try is placing the camera inside my cabinet, setting focus and exposure for when it's open, then capture the action of me grabbing the coffee beans from my cabinet. The second reveal shot, I want to be inside my drawer. Since my camera is way too big, I'm going to use my iPhone with the settings I shared earlier. If you ever feel like your sequences are a little stale, look to capture at least one fun shot and place the camera in an unexpected place. These create moments of delight and can be interesting transition points between scenes. Let's drop our pickup shots into the sequence and see how that changes things. To liven things up, I'll try another track here that's a little bit more upbeat with an interesting intro. Now, let's see the final result. I hope this look into my process was helpful to you. Let me know if you'd like to see more content like this. If you have questions, ask, and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks again to Universal Music for Creators for sponsoring this video. I've left links to them in the description, as well as details on the gear and tools I've featured here. With that out of the way, it's time to get back to work.